Okay, so let us start the meet. Uh, we'll take the first question for today. It's from, uh, but before that, uh, I am I audible to you guys? Can someone respond quickly? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So let us take the first question for today. It's uh, from Gate 2011, Electrical Engineering, Technical Question 11. So a low pass filter with cutoff frequency 30 hertz is cascaded with high pass filter with cutoff frequency 20 hertz. The resultant system of filter will function as uh, whether an all pass filter, an all stop filter, band stop filter or a band pass filter. So uh, the key word here is, is the cascaded system. A low pass filter is cascaded with a high pass filter. So let us uh, just proceed how will we solve the question. So individually, uh, let us look at how the ideal responses of a high pass and a low pass filter looks like. So there will be a cutoff frequency. Uh, let us say on the left, it is a low pass filter. So FL is the low pass filter's cutoff frequency. So any frequency below that, it will allow that frequencies to propagate. So that is why low pass filter allows the frequency lower than the cutoff frequency. And on the right hand side with the blue color figure is the high pass filter where FH is the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter, after which it allows the higher frequencies to propagate in the system. So these are the ideal responses. Uh, this slide shows the practical responses of the filters where FL is the cutoff frequency, but it corresponds to uh, the frequency at which the magnitude is one by root two times, which you must have read in the theory. Uh, although it is not of necessary here, but I'm just telling as a fact. And similarly for high pass filter, it is uh, one by root two times of the higher magnitude in the high pass allowing range. So these are the typical responses uh, of the practical filters, low pass and high pass. Okay, so for the given question, two filters are cascaded, whereas input filter, first is the low pass filter, then is the high pass filter, and then there is the output signal. So we want to know the nature of the output signal where input signal will be consistent of many frequencies. So in the, in the question, uh, low pass filter is having uh, a cutoff of 30 hertz and the high pass is having a cutoff of 20 hertz. So assume there is a case one which matches with our question where low pass filter is of 30 hertz and high pass is of 20 hertz. Uh, and no information is given, so assume it is an ideal response. So at 20 hertz, it will, any frequencies above 20 hertz, it will allow high pass filter and any frequencies below 30 hertz, it will allow. So uh, during the first stage, let us say when the input signal comes at this intermittent stage after low pass filter, so all the frequencies below 30 hertz will be allowed and only this orange uh, region bounded by the orange curve will be propagated to the high pass filter and after that the remaining frequencies will be this gray shaded area because high pass filter won't allow any frequencies below FH that is 20 hertz in the question. So the remaining area is the gray area that is of a band pass filter as only one band of the frequency is allowed. Okay, So option is answer D but uh, let us say how you can be tricked here in the question. Suppose they gave FH as greater than FL. So assume FH was 30 hertz and FL was 20 hertz. So by looking at this figure, you would have thought, as in someone if only if he, he or she, if he draws the uh, figure and see, oh, this is a band stop filter, rest two frequencies are propagated. So they can directly write option B as band stop filter, option C, whatever. It's a printing mistake. But yeah, band stop filter. But keep in mind, it is written as cascaded system. So if this was the case in the system, so in the first cascading, only frequencies up to the FL will be propagated. And frequencies in the second stage, only frequencies above FH will be propagated. So this would have been a all stop filter. Basically, if this was the characteristic of the cascaded system, no frequencies would have been propagated if 
the question was reversed okay so just keep in mind it depends what type of system you are given as it was a cascaded system you should be careful that how the frequencies are interacting if this were reversed it was all stop filter for the given question the answer is a band pass filter as only one band of frequencies is allowed so any doubt in this question yes no sir i mean okay i'm assuming no okay fine so let us look at the next question so it's a gate 2011 technical question 12 uh, so this op amp circuit is given and the correct transfer characteristics basically uh, the options are like this v not versus vi characteristics are asked okay this is the output voltage and this is the vi input voltage so and uh, no information practically any no numericals are given except the power supply voltages of 12 and minus 12 and all these resistors have no values they are labeled as r so okay how will you solve this question uh, let let us uh, see how how we will go ahead with this question this are your options um, you want if nobody knows this concept <coughs> how will you understand which option matches let us see so assume this circuit is made up of two parts in two sub circuits uh, circuit 1 on the left in orange part which is the first circuit and other is the circuit 2 on the right hand side so uh, this circuit uh, let us analyze uh, let us name the intermittent voltage as va this uh, intersection of blue and orange let us name it as va and from circuit analysis if you apply kvl and this is the op amp circuit assume this is an ideal op amp uh, where virtual short is valid and uh, uh, let us assume you give positive here vi and negative here you are connect a source here and when you analyze this circuit you will understand this is a differential amplifier if you solve even by if someone can understand by looking at it well and good you can directly write vi is equal to minus vi but if we, even if you solve this question uh, let us assume you have ground here so this positive terminal is held to ground and vi is having a positive vi voltage and uh, this is a negative feedback so va will be minus vi it will simply become a inverting amplifier so this is the answer for this circuit the relationship between intermittent voltage va and vi va is equal to minus vi now i want you to remember this information because this is a key information in the question now let us forget about this circuit for now and go ahead in the next circuit uh, like i said this is a typical differential amplifier circuit where vi is equal to minus vi now let us look at the second circuit uh, you don't know what it is only you know is vi is fed into the circuit and output voltage vi is given and this feedback circuit is there where as you know in a ideal op amp no current enters an op amp so all the current will go through this feedback path into the ground so this point will be v0 by 2 as both resistors are equal okay so how will you determine the performance of this circuit the only given information is plus 12 and minus 12 supply and va is there and v0 by 2 is the non inverting terminal so let us assume uh, just for a starting point to analyze the circuit assume v0 is at 12 volt okay and uh, let us try to formulate a relationship between va and v0 okay va and v0 so uh, assume you are increasing va from 0 volts to a finite positive value say 100 volts maybe from 0 volts to 100 volts you are increasing in positive direction from 0 to 100 you will increase the va okay so and we assumed va v0 is 12 volt initially okay so 12 volt is the v0 uh, Uh, because that is the maximum voltage that the op amp can give from the power rails ideal op amp so v0 by 2 will be 6 volts so the threshold as op amp is a op amp is a comparator by in its nature so when when the positive minus negative the voltage at the positive and minus terminals when it is uh, when v plus is greater than v minus the output is 12 volts and v plus is less than v minus the output is minus 12 volts so 
the threshold is uh, determined by V plus terminals, V naught by 2. So, when we increase VA from 0 to say in a positive direction, as soon as it crosses 6 volts, the assumption which we took V naught was 12 volts, it will switch to minus 12 volts, okay, this blue curve. Uh, any doubt still here? Uh, is this step clear? Then we will proceed to next step. Can someone respond? Can any one of you just respond? Any is this was this step clear to you guys? So, okay, I am assuming it is clear. Okay, so this uh, VA is increased from zero to in a positive direction. So, twelve volt will be switched to minus twelve volts. Okay, fine, clear. So, it will be switched to 12 to minus 12 volts as soon as it crosses 6 volts. When VA crosses 6 volts, it will go to minus 12. Now, let us see what will happen if from this direction we will go in reverse. So, this blue curve was there when we went from 0 to positive direction of VA. Now, assume you are in that state, you are in minus 12 volt state and you decrease VA from positive to negative direction. So, assume V, V naught is at minus 12 volt when you went from this state to this state and this V naught will be minus 6 volts and the only time this op amp will change the state is when V plus is greater than V minus, that is when 12 volt will come. So, when the V A goes below more negative than minus 6 volts, that is when V plus will be more than V minus and again 12 volts will come. So, this red direction when you decrease VA from positive towards the negative VA direction that is when the red curve will be followed by this circuit and the threshold point will be again minus 6 volts. Okay. So, this is the typical characteristic of this circuit when V naught and VA are switched in this fashion. So, Finally, relation between VI and V naught is asked in the question. Okay, this question asks you the relationship between VI and V naught. Okay, V naught versus VI, and we have got the relationship between VA, VA and V naught. And as VA is equal to minus V naught, which we proved in the question earlier, you just have to switch, flip the waveform along the y-axis that is V A will be becoming minus V I. So, just take the mirror image of this waveform that is the answer to your question that is option D I guess. Okay. So, uh, this option D, this is the flipped waveform V naught versus V I. V, this C option corresponds to V naught versus V A that is the intermediate point. Okay. So, D option is the answer to this question. And I hope uh, this this waveform, how it came, it is clear to you. This was the relationship between V A and V naught. So, any doubts from you guys? Okay. So, just as a small information, this waveform represents a Schmidt trigger, Schmidt trigger circuit. Uh, you can uh, kind of look into it. So. I mean, there are multiple ways to realize this waveform. One such way is the op-amp circuit, but there are multiple ways in which you can get a Schmidt trigger circuit. Uh, so, just look at look into this waveform. Although, even if you do not know the Schmidt trigger, this question was doable. Just you had to apply basic principles. Start with the assumption when such op-amp circuits come in the exam and it will come uh, because gate has a, a history of giving op-amp circuits in the gate exam, at least one or two gate questions are based on op amps. So, just uh, re refresh your op amp basics and uh, and revise them so that you are well versed with the assumptions. How will you proceed to solve this question with the concepts of virtual short, differential amplifier, 
inverting, non-inverting amplifier, etc. So that's it. Uh, let's just look at the last question for today. Uh, so again, gate 2011, it's technical question 13. A three-phase current source inverter used for speed control of an induction motor is to be realized using MOSFET switches. Uh, uh, switch S1 to S6, S6 are identical switches. So the proper configuration for realizing S1 and S6 are. So these are the options given. Which kind of switch will you use in this circuit? Uh, so before we proceed, uh, a current source inverter is basically a voltage source inverter with a high inductance such that this ID is a DC value instead of a DC source, instead of a DC stiff DC voltage, this source acts as a constant DC current source rather than a constant DC voltage source. Okay, that is the information regarding current source inverter. However, the, the load is of the interest here, which is the induction motor. So induction motor operates in two modes. One is the motoring region. Uh, it acts as a motor and if, if it is uh, uh, to be operated as a generator, you can also operate it uh, where the current will flow from load to the source. So in a regenerative braking mode or uh, generative modes. So induction motor has a capability of s providing current from output side to the input side. So as the nature of the load is such where it can act as a motor also and as a generator also, we require a bi-directional switch here. So let us look which kind of switches will act as a bi-directional switch. So let, let us look at the basic MOSFET which is given here. So MOSFET is shown by this symbol and these diodes are inbuilt. Basically the MOSFET has an internal diode this is not a separate diode which is shown here. Uh, although you can connect a separate diode parallel to MOSFET, but MOSFET inherently has a diode fabricated inside it. So in this direction, from top to down, shown in the orange arrow, the conduction is controlled. So when a positive voltage is given to A and negative voltage is given to B, the current will flow from top to down. And when we give gate pulse to this MOSFET, it will conduct from A to B. So it is controlled. It depends on the gate pulse. But when a positive voltage is given to B and negative is given to A, the, it, the conduction will happen through diode and it, it will be uncontrolled. Basically diode will just conduct because of the forward biasing. So in this orange direction, the diode is reverse biased and the MOSFET will conduct. And in the reverse direction, the diode will take over the entire path and it will be uncontrolled conduction. So this is the bi-directional switch which is of our interest as induction motor has to operate in both regenerative and motoring modes also. Let us look at the other switches. So this is a typical MOSFET with a diode. Now what will happen is as these two switches are in series, diode will conduct only in the forward direction, A to B direction, which is the orange direction. This top diode for the A option. In the blue direction, it will block. So it is not a bi-directional switch. Let us look at the option B. Uh, this, this B option, again, same case. It is a typical MOSFET, but it will only conduct, uh, basically it will not conduct. In the forward direction, it will not allow this MOSFET to conduct because of this diode in the opposite direction. And uh, in the reverse direction also, this diode won't allow to conduct and this diode may try to conduct but this won't allow. C option is the normal MOSFET and uh, D option is like in the reverse direction this MOSFET won't conduct and this diode won't conduct. In the forward direction this diode will take over and this MOSFET will have no significance because this entire uncontrolled conduction will be from A to B. So the only option that fits our description is controlled forward direction and uncontrolled reverse direction. That is the C option. That is the bi-directional switch that are needed for the induction motor type of load for motoring and regenerative applications. So any doubts in this question? No, 
about sir okay okay fine um, just one uh, small theory about current source inverters so uh, as this load is not of uh, induction motor type of a load this is a normal uh, uh, load let's say r load for now so this kind of is anybody speaking uh, kartik can you just mute your mic yeah so uh, so uh, let us assume this il is input current is a dc is and this this is a switch which is for operating this load so output current when q1 and q2 are conducting it is of a square wave fashion instead of a voltage source inverter where a pwm wave or a sinusoidal kind of uh, current can be drawn in the load it is just a square wave operation however this load is not a regenerative load like an induction motor so here bidirectional switches are not needed but just to show you the theory of current source inverters the operating waveforms are like this but if a load is to be regenerative in this region you require a bidirectional switch here instead of a q1 which is of interest in this question so that is the case but this were the typical waveforms of a current source inverter input current and output current so uh i'm assuming no doubts or if if any any of the questions even this opam question or this band stop i any doubts i can repeat it again otherwise uh, we can close the meet Okay uh fine then so thanks a lot for joining the session uh see you in the next session thank you